hope you all enjoyed that ladies and gents and as I said there would be a part two which is the the crypt which we're going to go and see now so I hope you're all going to find this one interesting this is the oldest and most original part of the church so it's well worth seeing there we go. off we go this is the entrance to the crypt I'll just point you down a minute because I don't want to point you in anyone's face that's not fair is it the crypt and chapel of the Holy Spirit as I say this is the most original part of the church it was a, an undercroft originally crypt and chapel of the Holy Spirit Sorry about that. Something Glen so William Clark Esquire died the first of December. Oh, and it's all in Latin. Here lies the body of Rebecca, wife of Mr. John Young, Esquire of this parish that's quite worn away. I can't make them up I'm sure that out, I'm afraid of my eyes. It looks better on screen. I'll take a picture then. Shall have a look later. Danger, do not open this door when the organ blower is in operation. Or rather we should say, danger, do not open this door when the organ blower is in operation. Or there could be an enormous accident. Mr. Julian Marshall Esquire. The St. Olives South was a wool merchant. He died December the 25th. Sorry, he died the 25th of February and I think it's 1701 aged about 89 here live interred Colonel Charles Bainton Obit May the 6th Sorry, May the 26th. Most of it's gone. You can see the one. Aged 47 years. Also, the body of Elizabeth, his wife, who died December the 6th, 1719. Here lies the body of Thomas Beach Esquire. Many years coroner of the City of London who departed this life first of life first of July M D C C L X X X V one 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 and then aged L X V one 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 years. For anyone that doesn't like crypts and burials, this is pretty much what this is about, this one, so... I know the Lady Samophenia likes these things. Dutton. Got Duttons in my family. Lovely lady, actually. Here's, uh, here lie interred the body of Mrs. Elizabeth Dutton. Widow. Daughter of Mr. Smallwood 
formerly rector of St. Mary Le Beau. She died the 16th of April 1728 in the 79th year of her age. Here lie the body of her two sisters, Mrs. Catherine, and I'm afraid the rest of that bin bit of that's gone, and Mrs. Susanna Smallwood. Here lie the book. Here lie Enricus Walker Rector. That's, most of that's in Latin as well. Body of William Scrinshire, who died August sixteen eighty four. Here lie his what his wife died February sixteen seventy two. So William and Hugh, their sons, I think it says. If you ladies and gentlemen can make this out, it's, it looks a lot better on the screen than it does by eye. I do have very poor eyesight, so. He died a bachelor, Matthew, one of the sons. Mr. Scrimshire, Esquire, and Elizabeth, his wife. John, one of the other sons of the above, William Scrimshire, died January 6, 1752, age 76. William, eldest son of Mr. William Scrimshire, a squire, died 29th of December 1754, aged 80. He left issue one son and two daughters. <coughs> See, we're standing here in a Norman undercroft. This is the oldest part. And in the war, people sheltered down here. A lot of church crypts became makeshift war shelters or air aid shelters pretty quick. Think of the history this has seen since 1080. The prayers, the joy, the pain, all that kind of stuff. Not to sound arty farty or whatnot, but. Here here lies the body of Sarah Howard, daughter of Samuel Howard, late of this parish who departed this life, the 25th of June, 1703, aged 17. Thomas Gearing, G-E-A-R-I-N-G, Esquire, and that's pretty much a most of that I can make out. Henry Gough, G-O-U-G-H, citizen and grocer of London who departed this life the 26th of February 1692 in the 70th year of his age and the rest of that is uh, pretty much worn away the light shining on them doesn't help sometimes as well good coat of arms though there's a very old one there, it's got a, a kneeler on it. So 
we won't move the kneeler. Here lies the body of Arthur Barron. A worthy member of many societies. In this honourable city, a prudent man diligently something and charitable, a good friend and a very kind relation. He died a bachelor, 20th of July, 1702, in the 80th year of his age. He alive the body of his nephew, Mr. Alexander Barron who died a bachelor, unlike his uncle, the 13th of June, 1703, in the, and the rest of that's gone, so a year of his age, but that's gone. Oh, so uncle and nephew were both bachelors, They're both buried together, which is nice. Here lay the body of Mr. James Cart, citizen, and something who departed this life, the 8th of June 1706, aged 46 years. Here lies the body of his son by Jane. But you know, it's a bit, you see, it's covered up, so I ain't even gonna try with that one because it will bug me. J. McSee, 8, uh, 1908 to 1990. B. M. Sorry, B. McSee, 1911 to 82. That will be ashes interred under there, I should think. I've got an old picture of her, or an engraving of this. Undercroft and crypt on my phone saved. You'll be stunned when you see the historical bit of the end of this, just how piled high with coffins it actually was. Clearing them out must have been quite an unpleasant, arduous, and in a morbid way interesting task. Because to be buried in a church crypt, you would have had to have a bit of money. So, yeah. I don't know what's through here, whether it's the calf or what. No, that's locked, that one. So it must be the other door. If the calf is open. Formerly buried within the precinct of this church. Hmm. They were moved here December 1958. Interesting. This way, then I can't film anyone. Then look, this is the oldest part. Very interesting too. Norman, as I say, I think of uh, all the history that you've seen. Through there. There's a tight area over there. 
Right. Hope you all found this interesting. And now for some historical images. And for our historical look back, it's the crypt and some more historical images of the church that someone kindly sent me. But this is the crypt as we see it today. This is one of the pictures I took. And what we're going to see is a very, very different crypt back in yesteryear. Crypts were used for obvious reasons, and that's what we're going to see it as. This image dates from 1806, and as you can see, the coffins and earth and muck and everything are piled quite high in the crypt. Um, quite a lot of people gathered around in this one. God knows what the man with the whip is doing, but we dread to think. This one here is uh, 1818, and it's a colour image. It shows basically what you expect to find in the crypt, and this one was packed full as well. London Fever, the crypt of Bow Church, 1819. And you can see there's adult and children's coffins literally packed high up as, it, as they can go. London was a big growing city and a lot of the people had to be buried somewhere and the wealthier ones ended up in crypts like this. A 1929 image of the crypt which you can see by this point has been cleared out of most of its dead. Um, uh, this, this is how it was used in the Second World War as a shelter. And as I said, images of the church. A friend very kindly sent me this one. And this is an image of what Cheapside and Cheapside Cross and Old St Mary Laveau would have looked like before the Great Fire of London. A very slightly dirty, hustly bustly place. But it would have been tarted up for high days and holidays because a lot of the royal processions that left from the tower, for coronations particularly, they went down Cheapside to Westminster and people would get on the roofs of the houses, as you can see here, banners and things would be hung. It was a real um, colourful and lively place, shall we say. And this I absolutely loved. These are uh, Wren's blueprints, or his plans. This is what he envisaged. Uh, they didn't like it, they thought it was too Catholic and too Roman. So this is what they got. <laughs> it planed down a little bit. They didn't like anything Catholic in the 17th, 18th centuries. It wasn't really till the 1780s and 90s that Catholicism was legalised again. So yeah, this is what they went with. And this is the tower. It's great to be able to see these because these would have been drawn up, it's believed, by Hawksmoor, Nicholas Hawksmoor, the architect who worked closely with Wren along certain points. Uh, this is an image of Cheapside, but this is from the circa 1760s, and it shows the busy hustle and bustle of Cheapside, and of course the Church of St Mary Le Beau standing proud. This image is from the latter Victorian period, and if you look down to the bottom right, you can see the men in their straw boaters and the carts and horses and everything going to and fro. And of course, St Mary Le Beau tucked away in amongst all the other buildings there. It's more prominent nowadays. And this is what the church interior looked like before the Second World War destruction. A real treat to be able to see this with its original stained glass and stuff like that. It, it doesn't look so very different now, but there's difference as you can see. And they've done a nice job at restoring it, so thankfully it still survives. But great to be able to have a look back at what it was like, isn't it? St Mary Le Beau, Cheapside, June 1941. A little watercolour that shows the destruction. A couple of Wren's churches that were bombed in the war. Same as, um, I think it's... Uh, no, it isn't. No, it's, it's another one that I go to. It's a little ruined church garden. Can't think of its name at the moment, but the churches themselves, a few of them were destroyed, but the towers were so well built that World War II German air raids couldn't blow those down. And that was the case with this one. The tower survived very well. Here we've got a proper photograph showing wartime damage and destruction, not only just of the church, but the surrounding area. I mean, the Germans were bombing all along and around the Thames, and they literally bombed the shit out of this area. London really copped it. Another wartime one. 
And another one from the war. Must have been awful for people, mustn't it, to see the world they loved and knew blown away. And that, ladies and gents, concludes our tour of both church and crypt. I hope you've all found it interesting. If you did, please give it a like and a share. And if you do so, thanks very much for doing so. Take care all, and I'll see you on the next one. The next one I'll share will be Bow Church, to highlight the difference between St Mary Le Bow and Bow Church, which is near Stratford. Because a lot of people do mistake and think that the Bow Church near Stratford one is the one that you have to be born within the sounds of its bells of to be a true cockney. It's not, it's this church. Anyway, as I say, that will be our next church that you'll see soon. Thanks very much all, take care and I wish you all well.